live on Facebook. Say what's up real quick. What's going on? What's going on, Dante, Dante Nation uh, fans? Bo Mack. Bo Mack, Terrence Crawford training right here. Watching Dante's Boxing Nation. Y'all hey, see it. Y'all see it. Right Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? What have I been telling you guys since day one? A microphone and a camera is the most dangerous weapon in the world. Well, we might have to add social media to that list as well, because today we see people getting busted left and right for revealing or expressing how they really feel on some type of post on the internet, regardless if they're responding to someone or just ranting about something. Well, when it comes to top ranks matchmaker, Bruce Trampler, he was actually responding to just random people on the internet. And man, this comment, it really got under his skin because he came out and said something that you could only get away with in the sport of boxing, the wild, wild west of sports. So someone sent Bruce Trampler a message on the internet and they were basically saying that top rank treated Terrence Crawford like a slave. Top Ranks matchmaker, he responds by saying, ignorant post you made here. The so-called Top Ranks slave ship paid Bud tens of millions of dollars for his fights, but you're a critic because Spence didn't want to fight Crawford. Bud is a multi-millionaire slave. You should be so fortunate. End quote. Boy, oh boy, you give a man enough rope, he will definitely hang himself because that's exactly what Bruce Trampler just did. I mean, there's so much to say about this post. I almost don't even know where to begin, but let's start with what he said towards the end. He said, you should be so fortunate. Why would the guy he's talking to on the internet be fortunate because top rank paid Crawford millions of dollars? Clearly when he says you should be so fortunate, he means you black people should be happy that we were paying Crawford all of this money. Regardless of how we treated him, he was getting paid when he was being treated that way, is what the matchmaker is saying. Let me say this as well. If you're not black right now, you are in no position to tell people how black people should feel about this situation. You can't speak for black people and say what's offensive to black people and what's not. If you have no tattoos and you want to know how does it feel to get a tattoo, you're going to ask someone who has tattoos. You're not going to ask someone who has zero tattoos, right? Same thing applies here. If you're saying something towards black people and you want to know how they feel about it, was it appropriate to say it or not, you're not going to go ask a white person. You're going to ask a black person if you really want to make sure you're not offending anyone before you actually say what you're thinking about saying, right? Now listen, we already know there's gonna be a lot of fans that are not black that are once again gonna say, hey, this is not offensive at all. Hey, it doesn't bother me. It wasn't offensive to me at all. He was just being sarcastic. That's the main thing they're gonna say. He was quoting the guy, he was just being sarcastic. So in other words, what they're saying is, you can be racist as long as you're being sarcastic when you say it. As long as you do a little wink, and we know you really didn't mean it when you actually said it. Now, do you know how you can tell if these people are racist or not? Well, it's very easy. If these same people have never admitted in their life that a certain incident had something to do with racism, if it was towards a black person, then we know they definitely have zero credibility when it comes to talking about this on top of them already not being black. Now let's revisit what top ranks matchmaker Bruce Trampler just said right now. As long as Crawford was making millions of dollars, he's a millionaire slave if anything, right? You should be so happy, you should be so fortunate. I'm sure you guys have seen the comments every once in a while on the internet where some fan says maybe there's some racial double standards that's being talked about and he'll completely try to change the subject, deflect by saying, well, how can this over here have something to do with race when Floyd Mayweather was the biggest star in boxing and he was the richest or is the richest? Did you guys know that Sammy Davis Jr. was one of the highest paid entertainers in the country and yet at the same time, 
he couldn't even stay in the hotels that he was performing at. Man, these people that create these deflections, they know how much money you make or how dominant Floyd Mayweather was in the ring has nothing to do with the racism that's going on right here. The double standards that we see all the time in the sport. Fighters being protected from black fighters. Old media calling fighters that don't even have all four belts undisputed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That has absolutely nothing to do with how much money Floyd Mayweather makes. How much money the tens of millions of dollars that Terrence Crawford makes. Once again, they're saying, as long as we pay you to treat you however we want, it's no way that can be considered racism because we're paying you millions and millions of dollars. He said, next fight I want Terrence Crawford. Well, I killed the fight. Yeah. So you, would, you wouldn't want that poor Manny? No, because I know would know how it would end. I mean, not that I knew it would end in in a uh, uh, serious uh, disability for Manny. I would, that I wouldn't know. But uh, as a fight, it would only end one way. You wouldn't want to see Manny take a lot of damage would, and pull towards your emotions, putting him in a position like that? Forget my emotions. I wouldn't want to see him take that kind of damage because it might uh, affect uh, his future life, uh, quality of his future life. When it comes to Pacquiao and uh, Crawford, I think Crawford is an elite welterweight uh, and has a skill set uh, that uh, uh, trumps uh, the uh, skill set of Manny Pacquiao. So I would go with Bud Crawford. But that would be, probably still is, uh, but it, it certainly in their prime, in Pacquiao's prime, because Crawford's in his prime now, that would have been an amazing fight to watch. But uh, uh, Crawford, uh, let, in my opinion, is more skilled than Juan Manuel Marquez. And at best, uh, Manny uh, and Marquez were even yeah. in their battles. So once again, top ranks matchmaker Bruce Trampler is saying, it doesn't matter if we're stalling your career. It doesn't matter if we're preventing you from being the next big star in the sport of boxing. As long as we're paying you millions of dollars, that's all that matters. Something else I want you guys to pay attention to what Bob Arum said. You guys always hear me tell you, if old media feels the wrong guy is going to win the fight, they don't want to watch the fight. That is exactly what Bob Arum just admitted. He said, I never wanted to see that fight because I knew how it was going to end. I didn't want to see that fight because I knew Terrence Crawford was going to win the fight. Talk about a conflict of interest. I told you guys before, Chris Mannix has done the same thing. He said the same type of things. Max Kellerman has said the same type of things. When Jojo Diaz was fighting in a title eliminator for Devin Haney's belt against Javier Fortuna, the entire cast that was calling the fight never even mentioned Devin Haney's name. But instead, Todd Grisham, who was also calling the fight, he mentioned Ryan Garcia's name during the fight. He said, boy, that sure would be a great fight. Ryan Garcia versus Jojo Diaz. And then Chris Mannix, after the fight, he interviews Oscar De La Hoya while he's in the ring. And he says, do you think you can make the Jojo Diaz versus Ryan Garcia fight? You see, Chris didn't want to see the Devin Haney fight because he felt that Devin Haney would win the fight. And he actually admitted this later on after the fight was signed. I've already showed you guys clips or play clips for you. Chris Mannix, he actually said, once we were closer to the fight, he said, man, this is going to be an uphill battle for Jojo Diaz to win this fight because Devin Haney has the potential to become pound for pound, either number one or one of the best fighters in the world. So when it comes to top rank, Bob Arum has already admitted that he killed the Manny Pacquiao 
Crawford fight because the wrong guy was going to win. Now we have Shakur Stevenson, who's been calling out Oscar Valdez, and Bob Arum is refusing to make that fight as well. We'll see if Bob Arum says the same thing because we know that that fight is not going to happen anytime soon. So we'll see if Bob Arum comes out and he admits that he killed some other fights like the Shakur Stevenson versus Oscar Valdez fight. We'll see if he says something like that in the near future. I'll close out with saying this. Do you guys know how big this would be, this story would be, with Bruce Trampler, a top-ranked matchmaker, what he just said about Terrence Crawford? You know how big this story would be if this was in the NFL, the NBA? This would be the biggest news in the country if someone says something like this when it comes to, once again, the NFL or the NBA. This is why I always tell you guys, boxing is solely based on race, nationality, and pride in that order. And as long as the offense is towards black people, then it's not going to be a big story. It would have to be towards someone who's not black. That's when it becomes a big story. Like when Devin Haney said he would never lose to a white boy. Man, every time I check my phone, there were websites that weren't even boxing websites that was reporting Devin Haney saying that. But when it comes to this, not one single person has reported on it yet, at least when it comes to old media. We know what time it is. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, then this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Dekey Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling, and inflammation and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to LODekey.com, like them on Facebook and follow them on Instagram. Fellas, I've got some great news for you. If you've lost your hair or have a receding hairline, the time has come when you can finally get your hairline back through a process called scalp micropigmentation. So here's how it works. It's a hair tattoo that replicates the look of your hair follicles when you have fully shaved it down. So to get this hookup, make sure you follow and contact my man, Scalp Carolinas, on Instagram. Contact them at 704-499-3471 and make sure you follow them on Instagram.